night out right now we we about to talk um you know we about to start the podcast around one week uh tomorrow i go get all the equipment and um god oh, damn motherfucker what do you call was lagging a little bit but um anyways i just been so busy there's just a lot of stuff going on that you guys don't some of you know some of you don't know yet and we didn't come on here to uh Stop the make a bunch of drama and it, 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 it never started out that way it, it uh it's chicano rap it always ends up that way <laughs> it's the beauty of chicano rap <laughs> but anyways let me see right here black d is mad uh you can't be mad at me homie when when i come to help build your thing i promote you every week um i didn't talk about him i i know what happened you know, I let Night Out, we, we, me and Night Out did an interview, and I said, maybe you guys should have a conversation, and uh, Night Out will be here in a minute. But I said, maybe you guys should have a conversation off air. Him and Tony, because they're homies. And I felt, so I changed the conversation after we talked our mind, because there's been a lot of disrespect on here. So we, we, we basically, I'm just give you before Night Out comes on, and then we're, Night Out's going to be around the, he said give me about five minutes, so I didn't want to wait no longer. So uh what do you call it anyway? So I just wanted to tell you guys like the little part that where this started off. Um <clears throat> my throat's a little messed up. Oh but anyways, so I basically I I saw there was drama. I changed the interview to an actual real interview about night out, like you know. Like we should have been interviewed on Tony's. We we should have been. Uh, we saw that, but there's real facts to everything. Listen, so we um, I interviewed him, asked him a question when he first recorded. Uh, Daddy and my love was a gangster. What studio was that? Who was the girl singer? Was she fine? Blah 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 blah. What what was what was how did what made you record that song? Just questions you would ask artists. As look, at I'm a producer, low pro. Like let me let me take this off the thing quick. Look. I make all the beats. We got I got beats by Steve Vicious, Fingers, but everything in Low Pro is recorded with me. And I go to his podcast. The dude has no no professional questions or any. I'm a Gram. I'm a Grammy nominated producer. I mean, he's made a couple songs a producer, but samples. Our songs are all original. So, you know, except it's from real old ones, but all the new shit has been. But but I don't talk about that. I let him be. You guys praise him, and but he didn't ask me about one song. If you don't like royalty music, ask about how was it like uh, royalty. Uh, when you recorded Little Rob, like he just wanted the cheese man, homie. He just wanted the the drama, like like homie. We're old now. Ask some real intelligent questions, homie. You know, ask where the fuck we were. You know, let 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 me know good things about our our business like you know what i mean we achieved something not down it and and ask what's our favorite black artist and there's no i'm not here to um how you say i'm not here to put my are you racist bro? how can i be i'm not racist i'm just here to talk i'm only mexican i can only talk about my chicano rap you know i'm faded from earlier so excuse me but um, so 
I asked him these questions, and um, me and Nada started speaking. Let me see what they're asking. Me and Nada, me and Nada started speaking, and then I saw that the beginning was negative, so I deleted it. By the morning, Tony blocked me, blocked Nida, blocked little one, and blocked us all. And I tried to hit him up. I said, bro, why'd you block it? He went and called me like a grown-ass man. And I'm just like, hey, homie, you you know, don't, don't, don't block us. So I said, let's chop it up. So, you know, we've donated a lot of money. We've helped you guys. We, we, we co-signed a guy that wasn't in the business. And um, I feel kind of disrespected. But I'm not, I'm not here to go fuck Tony and none of that. None of that. But I do, I do not want any of, in me, night out, I talked to, I talked to Kid Frost today, I talked to Tony G, I talked to Alamid, I talked to Bad Boy, I talked to a lot of Mr. D, and we're kind of like disappointed because we've all came out of our pocket and did, did projects. This man has got free money from all of you, around 50 racks. But, and how can you be so lazy? Shadow just had a stroke. Then he recorded the misters. Why wouldn't you go get that footage of the man? Let me see. Why, why would you not go get the footage of the man in the studio? We, we, we were excited about... We were excited about... Um, none of us cared about the money. He could make all the money. We had none of those problems. What say? It led with bad boy Tony A banging. Nah, you know where this came from? I, I think what happened, because I deleted it. Tony didn't see me that night. I think bad girl, what's her name? Magic girl? No problem with her, but I know how those little girls talk. She likes to do. She probably, because she came on that night. So I think she watched. And she went back to Tony. Oh, they're talking shit about you. So instead of being mad and just call, hey, bro, you talking? Nah, I would have told him, I, I've, you know. But he wants to believe what a girl is going to say. Because then we found out today he's producing her. You know, and... But my whole bottom line is, hey, homie, you took money from our people from a documentary without even talking to us about it. And we accepted that. But now you're blocking us? Like, how are you going to have a movie about Michael Jackson and then delete Michael Jackson? <laughs> you know what I mean? How are you going to fucking have Royal T get number one Tony G tells you he's the fucking king of Chicano rap. And you go to every podcast and don't talk about the king of Chicano rap. And then block me. And all I've done is donate money, help, uh, send them guests. I've been cool with it. I'm, I'm not here to hate. So we, I guess now, we're not going to be part of the... You guys gave the money. We have gave money. And here's the sad thing. You know, if I asked any of you guys, hey, homies... Why don't you guys do a documentary on Chicano rap? This is serious, homie. We almost all have died for Chicano rap. This dude was, was doing black DJing in 91, 92. That was it. And we let him come in here because we respected it, no problem. But he's not getting it for free. He's not putting it out of his pocket. He's actually, you guys actually gave him money. And when you guys gave him money, he just sat on his ass. I even asked him, hey, bro, we're going to film anything this week. What's up, homie? When I come to the second thing, do you, you want to set up some questions? I sat with him and kicked, asked him a bunch of questions. I mean, I gave him questions to ask me. You can watch my second interview. I'm like, hey, Tony, go ahead and ask me that question. Like, oh, we'll get to that. We'll get to that. And I was like, you know, you got to ask me serious. I, I can make jokes all day. I could be serious like this. I mean, you guys are forgetting. I know there's been a lot of cock sucking on that show about other people that have sat down with other distributors. Me at 18, 19 years old, sat down with fucking BMG, Universal, EMI. And I didn't get 50-50 deals. I got 80-20 deals, 90-10 uh, deals. I mean, this brain is smarter than my, my jokes. I know what the fuck I'm saying. So, but everything came out of my pocket, Night Owl's pocket. Little one's pocket, Mr. D's pocket, Capone's pocket, C Kid Frost. So, but we, we said, cool. But then this guy, we started noticing, not even Night Out. He goes, oh, Night Out's my favorite artist. He never asked Night Out about one recording, 
one record. Go check it out. The first time Nato talked about a record, Tony cut him off. He just wanted to hear gossip. No big deal. We still let that slide. But then we thought about it, like, bro, when I got to your studio, you wanted to get me out of there on my second interview, and you didn't even you didn't even tell me nothing about your your documentary. Because I'm see for Tony, I know they're watching, his son's watching, John's watching, uh, you you little snitches are watching. And here's the thing. Tony thinks I'm talking shit. I could care less if he wants to be my friend. I'm a grown man. He's a grown man. We live in different areas. We don't have to be best of friends. It's it's a respecting. But now you disres disrespecting me, blocking me. That's like what kids do. That's what the magic girl I expect to block people. Not grown 52-year-old fucking men. You call me and you say, hey, because he talked to me the days before almost every day. He could have called me and said, hey, homie. Hey, are you disrespecting me? I thought we were boys. And then we could have a conversation. That's what men do. That's what real men, let me, let me put my, was hairy balls do. We have a, he might shave them with his little muscles. I don't know. But this is what grown men do. We have a con, uh, 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 a conversation that we would find, we'll find out why Tony talks shit about me. Oh, that's Sandy Pants. Uh, okay. Um. So, Tony didn't have to come out of his pocket. You guys have donated almost 50 racks. Every time you're donating when we're on there, the donations under the shit. So, he just, are we, have you guys seen any new fucking cameras? You know how much an A7 Sony camera costs? $1,600. You know how much a badass lens costs? I have one in the other room. A badass lens is like $800. So, let's put that together. Lighting, look, I got some lights right here. Look, there's some lights right here. There's a lighting for, for videos and shit like that. You could get a lighting set, a boom mic, all that for around a thousand. So if you double that up, you're still at six grand. You got 50 racks, you only spent 6,000 in equipment. Why, why are you being so lazy? It's not like he does research when we're not, uh, night out gonna be coming. It's not like he does research about any of the artists that have been interviewed. He don't talk to none of us. So, I mean, he just ask, you know, drama about our life. I have achieved so much. You guys, you guys don't hear. When I say I lived in with my mom's car, we really lived in the fucking car. When I said I made a million dollars, I really made a million dollars. When I said I've been broke again, I really went broke again. And when I came back up, so there's a, well, I've traveled the world. I've done a lot of shit. I left school in ninth grade. I mean, I've been hustling all my life. So this guy keeps downing Chicano rap. So, that being said, let's think about something. He actually got donations. Remember, he, he brags about that he got paid this money like eight months ago. Oh, at one month. He told, he told Tony, uh, be real. Oh, I asked for my, uh, my thing. And, uh, and in less than two weeks, I got my goal, 15000 Night out in the building. And hold on. I'm going to see. Let me see. Mr. Night Owl. Yo, yo, what's up, my boy? Don't These fans, I, I took a while to uh, get in, homie. Okay. Uh, I know you've been on there by yourself talking to the fans, homie. Well, let, let but I had to do a couple of there. things, dog. Let, let I had, see. look, oh. I had some very, I'll tell you right now. Go ahead. Go ahead. Okay, but let me finish this. Let me finish go ahead, go ahead. Thing and then we're gonna, uh, so my thing is that he has 50 racks, donations from right now, from me, from everybody, willing to do our stuff. We weren't going to get paid for this, this thing. We're just going to talk our lives for free. And then he was going to sell it to you guys. So he got 50 free grand. Then he's going to sell it to you guys, not pay us. No big deal. Let's say for $30, $29, 5000 cup at 150 racks. And you're that fucking lazy. And you're going to block the kings of Chicano rap no matter what you think. You, you owe them a people back their money, homie. If I'm not in your documentary, not in your documentary, Kid Frost, uh, what Chicano rap you got? Shadow's not gonna be on it, Mr. D. Little one. Little one. What kind of documentary do you fucking got? Are you gonna put a Nortenio on uh, on there that when we made you famous? Are you gonna put a gay rapper on that? I mean, what 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 is there? So I'm not here to talk shit about the man, but I'm here to talk about the facts. When you disrespect me, homie, you, you thought it was funny, you said we were gonna 69 some joke, hey homie. I didn't disrespect you. 
and, and, and you know, we can make jokes, and I let you call me fat when we're joking as grown-ass men. But, homie, there's been a lot of bad allegations about you, and I've let slide. I've heard women say bad things. And I said, you know, none of my business. And and um, so, go ahead, Night Owl. Mr. Night Owl's in the motherfucking building. What up, Tony? What's up, Mr. Fucking uh, Royalty, my brother? How you doing, homie? I, I, you know, I, I was actually a little dizzy right now when I was talking. If you guys didn't notice, because I was like, fuck, I told you, man, I got, uh, man, uh, I guess I'm drinking, but go ahead. All right. Well, look, homie. You know, first of all, I, I missed the stuff that you were talking about because uh, I was taking care of something, homie, and I was talking to someone, and uh, I was gathering some information, bro, that uh, tomorrow there's going to be a special guest that's going to go live, and they're going to put Tony on blast on some stuff that he's done. I'm not going to say what it is right now because then I spoil the whole situation. Hmm. Okay. But but best believe, best believe that after tomorrow, bro, people are going to look at Tony A as the biggest piece of shit on the planet. And that's because he is. Look, I will not say what it is until tomorrow. People will find out. And uh, you'll know after we hang up, I'll talk to you on a personal and I'll break <laughs> it down to you. I already okay. talked to Shadow about it. I told him what it was and uh, a couple of other people. And uh, they know, but I can't throw it out there for all the fans right now because then I'd be uh, a, spoiling. Is, is you know what I mean? Certain girl that's coming out with something or something like that. Yeah, yeah. Tomorrow, a girl is gonna come out with uh, a situation that she's gonna put on blast, and Tony will be put on blast. And there's proof behind it. There's that's text true. messages. There's a bunch of stuff to prove all those facts. You Who know what Tony I mean? Married? Yeah, he's married, but obviously he's been doing things behind his wife's back, you know, and uh, that's his problem. He want to play chicken shit. He want to be a punk and he want to go and say that we're going to 69 each other and and say some disrespectful shit. Well, fuck him. You know, one thing is that I disagreed with the stuff that he was talking about and I disagreed with the stuff that he was doing as a person living out in uh, let's say, uh, our area of the planet. Okay. We're, we're, we're in the South side. Okay. So rule number one is you don't mingle with farmers. Okay. Mm -hmm. Now, when you are from a neighborhood, you know, the do's and the don'ts. Okay. You are not supposed to mingle with those motherfuckers. Okay. Now those that say, Oh, what the fuck? We're all Rasa. Yeah, we're all Rasa, but we're different types, different breeds. Because if we were out there, bro, we'd get shot. No, they would no. not They would not respect us because that's the kind of people they are. And we were taught since we were kids to not associate with them, so we don't. We respect the rules because that's what we're taught. Now, him, being who he was, he did not respect that. Basically, he said F his neighborhood, and he's bigger than that. He did not show no respect. So I'm sure he will get dealt with by someone somehow, some way, because he's fucking up. Now, you know, the faggot thing, bringing him well, into the picture and all on, that. On, before you keep going, uh, there's a couple idiots on here that are like, because they, they, they don't know the rules. They don't understand that we, uh, that we knew and all our little Rob, Kid Frost, we almost died. We almost, we've all been shot, out, shot at many times. Many areas putting down our fucking music all around everywhere you could go. You, you know what I'm saying? I mean, th that, that's no lie, dog. Look, I remember, okay, doing a show. and each other. <laughs> yeah, no, it's, it's true, dog. I remember a show we did in Barcelia, homie. Murray even talked about it on uh, his uh, one of his episodes from uh, Murray Brumfield. We was out there, bro, and it was... Only a few of us, dog. It was me, Spanish Fly, uh, Rich Rock, uh, a few other people that were there. And uh, we were there, homie. Me and Hitman were on stage dressed in blue with bandanas on, homie. And they told us, you guys got to take off the bandanas because they're blue. And right here, you know, everybody wears red. We're like, we don't give a fuck. Well, well they're going to get fucked. They're going to get shit. So anyways, we didn't, we didn't take them off, homie. 
at the end of the show, homie, when we went outside, they tried to rush us, homie. To make a long story short, there was a big old shootout. The farmers got shot up, and we fucking made it out of there alive. But they attempted to get us and take us out, bro. That's what they do to us. And fucking Tony's bringing these motherfuckers out here, homie. And these are dudes that now hide behind the Bible so that they can say, oh, we're okay. But they're not even hiding behind the Bible. They're hiding behind the Bible, but they also became snitches. Uh, yeah, their own, their own neighborhood. So, but these, some of they're not loved anywhere. Hanging went out, but look at, and people, you don't understand. We, us, to hang out, meaning even the ones, everyone in LA, everywhere, we've been talking about Raza Unite within ourselves. They're not with those motherfuckers. Them, and, and we have a, we have a, added Tony in that, and he never reached out to nobody. I've been, you guys don't understand behind the scenes. And someone said they couldn't hear me good. Behind the scenes. I've been calling everyone. Even Nido hasn't believed it. Right, Nido? We yeah. Had these I'm like, I'm going to get Mr. D. Capone. I have conversations with Capone, and we hated each other. But we're grown-ass men, and we respect each other. But there's just been certain rules. It's not the rules what Nido saying. It's when Tony says, I'm a homie from my neighborhood, there's certain rules. You, and everyone that's been helping you out has been us. You, you you can't very dis you can't disrespect, you know what I'm saying? Yeah, you, you know you know what's a trip a trip out on this homie, when when he was at like six thousand dollars and uh nobody was basically giving oh, anymore. Yeah. It was at a little standstill for a minute. I gave him homie twenty five of uh, my stuffed animals and we said you know what fifty bucks and give a free one to whoever gives you fifty bucks. So he got rid of twenty five of them at fifty bucks homes. That's twenty five hundred dollars, dog, that I contributed apart from other money that I donated and my girl donated. So we did our part in helping this movement. You did your part in helping this movement. You bought commercials. Well, you no, bought this. This guy saying this dumb girl saying it could probably Tony or somebody night out rape Sandy Pants. That's stupid. Who? What do you say? Sandy Pants been in here. We we talked to Sandy Pants. What are you talking about? Yeah. Some girl tried to say, put your name on it. So, you know, it's obviously... One of the well, uh, that... well, wh wh whatever they put on it, we know that it's not true. And tomorrow, everything will be out in the open. And anybody that tried to involve me or smut me up, they just wanted to do that to fucking take the fucking uh, pressure off Tony A from the stuff that he's done. Tony A's dirty. He's a piece of shit. He's a rapist. And people will find out tomorrow. You know what I mean? And there's other girls that have been there that he's came on strong to. And there's text messages from those young ladies that have uh, sent to certain people. And they're talking about how Tony came at him. And he was how uh, very disrespectful trying to get at him. So that's no, why at, Tony. On, since we're on here night out, I have to say these things. Uh, these are allegations. Uh, allegations. And that's what I can say because one my page allegations. Yeah, you know I mean, but allegations, what I'm allegations. About, uh, the Chicano rap documentary. Uh, me and Night Out, about twenty of us are not going to be. We're going to start our own. I talked to Tony G. Tony G was kind of mad because you know Tony G told me, "Oh man, I didn't even know this fucking guy. I met him one time at a DJ conference, and this guy's been." blowing me up to do an interview and I go there and this guy has no fucking questions. He goes, go watch my interview with the Beat Junkies compared to Tony A. This guy asked me nothing. And then he goes on, on Cypress Hills and blows my nuts. And I don't know the guy. Like, acting like he was part of this when I was doing Easy's and all these, you know. He goes, I just did this kid for all. I, I, I've done on a hundred artists and he didn't ask me about, you know, how I produced or anything. And, Tony's a very serious producer. You know what I'm saying? Right, right. You know, and, and even when I when I said I want to do Rasa Unite and I want and I want Tony G to be the producer, Tony A didn't help me get a hold of him to do that. I had to go right. and, and break those things down. And you guys don't understand, I've been traveling, you'll see me eating dinner with certain people because I'm trying to unite my people. I'm trying to unite all of us. And it's very difficult because 
we had we've had a crazy career, all of us. You know, everyone's like, uh, oh, I gotta watch out, be careful. You know, and and night out. Let, let's get to this part, cause I know I wasn't. Were you gonna charge Tony to be in his documentary? Honestly. Honestly. Yeah. Hell nah. Me neither. I was doing it for the I was doing it for the love, dog. I was doing it for our culture, for our Chicano rap fans, because. They supported us all our life. And trip out on this. Trip out on this, homie. Don't you think, you made a very key point. Don't you think that if all of us, let's say a hundred of us, a hundred of us are on the documentary, right? Mm -hmm. And all hundred of us don't charge him one penny. One okay. Penny. And he, no, listen, listen, listen. And none of us charged him, which means he got everything free. free. Okay. And everybody paid so that he can, produce it, and make the copies. Don't you think he owes it to the fans to give it to him for free? Yeah, I mean... And he was going to charge him like 30 bucks a pop. What a piece bucks. of shit. I want you guys... I want to teach you guys numbers because I taught you guys numbers don't lie. Just like I'm number one over there, Tony H. Show. And I hope he makes... You know, it's all good. I don't care. But here, the numbers don't lie. So here it goes. In fact, oh, I'm gonna make these guys excited, very excited. I see you, I miss, I see you, Miss Magic Girl. Be careful. Uh, hey, hey, Shay, Magic Girl. You know uh, the allegations. People have been telling me, not one person, but a lot, that he's taking advantage of her and he's fucking her too. I don't. Those are just allegations. Allegations. I don't know about. Uh, I'll throw it out there because I don't give a fuck about Magic Girl, nor do I give a fuck about Tony A. I don't know Magic Girl, so I can give a fuck what she thinks. You know what I mean? I don't know her, dog. So she's not my friend, nor is she my enemy. You know, so I give friend. a fuck. I, 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 I've showed her how to do some stuff, but I mean, I just gave her some suggestions, but she don't call me. I figured it out because she... You showed her how to be a trick. Because she's Tony's artist now that we know that. Uh, well, yeah, like Tony's boning her. For sure, he told her, uh, don't call Royal. Yeah. Hey, hey, homie, you're, you're saying to, Night Owl's a rat. Did you see Tony disrespecting tonight for no reason? Who said that I'm a rat? Some fucking dude right here. Look, some fucking yeah, dude. Fuck him. I'll stick a fucking knife in his ass. Oh, God and damn. Fucking, I'll stick a knife in his ass and put his fucking mouth on a big bag of rice. God damn. Let's see, Night Owl... Dog, Tony is your homie. No, it, it, tonight that showed it wasn't our homie. I thought, yeah. and you know me, night out. I took that out there day white because I said, hey, it's too negative. We'll talk to him off air. Remember? I took right. Off, and guess what? This guy has to call me. I text him. I said, brother, give me a call. I, I even talked to his son tonight. And his son said, man, nothing but I said, hey, brother, nothing but love for you, homie. I love you. If your family, you're good. I can't believe your dad. I said, no man's going to disrespect me, especially when I'm showing love. You guys don't want to know. Every time I went over there, I spent thousands. I brought all the food and liquor now that he's trying to give out. That was me. I started that shit. Because everywhere I go, I'm classy, but ashy. <laughs> you know what I'm saying? Uh, so anyways, Night Owl, what, uh, who else did you talk to today? Uh, that was it, homie. I talked to a few people, but... I'm not going to put nobody on blast, homie. You know what I'm saying? Uh, as far as anybody, rat on what? You know, I, I want to just clarify that. Motherfuckers can't call me no rat motherfuckers, you know? It's just people love to hate and people like talking shit and stuff like that doesn't bother me because I know who I am. You know what I mean? So anybody that wants to say whatever they want to say can lick balls, homie, you know? And all I know is that what I'm stating right now are facts. And I'm not fucking running to the cops like when motherfuckers talk about spanking and they bring that shit up. If I would have been a rat, I would have called the cops on them, homie. I never did. And because I never <laughs> did, I I'm dealt with a lot of bullshit. You guys have no clue behind the scenes. Night House House had holes this big and motherfuckers are, and night used to come shooting. Blah, 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 every, you guys have no fucking clue the shit we've been through. <laughs> no, no fucking clue. But besides that, someone asked us Night House, if we were to go and join them on their podcast, inbox me. You know, I'll give Night Owl the information. Give me the information. Uh, me, Ms. Sancha, Night Owl, we're all down to go on podcasts. We need to spread the word of Chicano rap. You know what I mean? You know, right. Uh, you guys are, you guys see Tony's humble. He's collecting a lot of money, was planning to sell you guys shit. He couldn't even finish his uh, 
It's documentary. The, the documentary. Fucking, you know, I can go get DVDs in one fucking week. Anywhere in LA. Anywhere. And you guys paid them already. And you know, I watched the documentary. I laughed. You know why? You know why? When why is that? You, when have you not seen a, a fucking Oriental bootlegging at the SWAT <laughs> with Mexican workers? <laughs> I said, what right. the fuck? You guys even ever talked about me robbing myself, putting all the money? And I who are you rob people? These motherfuckers were making bootlegs and you guys got excited. <laughs> you, they were right. Shook Knight used to go to all. Hey, we should do a documentary of Cisco. Black Comey Cisco used to bootleg all the CDs. You know what I'm saying? All right, right. Like, hey, hey, remember Cisco had about 20 chicks working in a room butt naked just mm -hmm. to make sure that they wouldn't steal nothing. <laughs> that motherfucker, he, he pimped the game. I mean, much yeah. love to Cisco for that. He well, pimped you know, the it's game. Funny Whenever, whenever you needed something and the rec big record stores wouldn't have it, well, why do you think you had it? Because you were bootlegging it. And why do you think you had it next week? Because you had Tony and them wrapping up cassettes all fucking week with bootlegs. <laughs> right. <laughs> you know? Hey, it's just like when Biden wins, all you guys are going to work for a Chinese anyway. So it's the same as what happened back then at the rodeo. You know? <laughs> right. But anyways, yeah, there was no barcodes on none of those cassettes. None. <laughs> Hey, did you notice today, bro? Did you notice that today on the Be Real thing, not once, not once did Tony A mention Chicano rap. Never. There is the love for the Raza. <laughs> there is the love for Chicano rap. He had none. And then at the end, his famous words were what? What were oh, they, my boy? His famous words were, if you don't donate, you're not Mexican. If you're not donate, you're not Mexican. You know what I mean? And he told me real, he told me real, watch, watch, this works. I made 500 bucks off these motherfuckers. That's terrible, homie. That's terrible. Like, Man, he's taking advantage of our people. Now, this podcast he has, the only reason why he has it is because we let him in. Because remember, like in 94, he disappeared. And he was gone all the way to 2017. And when he came back, he came back and seen the movement of Chicano rap, and he's like, oh, let me do a podcast. And all of a sudden, we gave him the opportunity, and we allowed him to come in. And because of us, he created the format, and it got bigger because we fucking gave him the opportunity. We, we helped him. And now he thinks he's the shit. You know, we had no problem with that. Hey, I have no problem if Tony makes a million dollars. It's not about money. But, but give back to your people, homie. Yeah. So give back you to start, your people. When you start getting pissed off at the artists because they have an opinion, or, or, or have something, and even give you opportunity to call them and fix the problem, I mean, you become an egotistical asshole, homie. How the fuck are you going to collect money, interview my fucking life, and make money off it, and then block me? What the fuck's wrong with you, homie? What the fuck? You guys better fucking really listen because I know you're going to go over there. Tony, he's incredible. Like, I mean, be real, homie. This whole oh, be real. <laughs> but um, blood, <laughs> blood. What's up, blood? <laughs> blood. <laughs> hey, be real's cool. I've never had a problem with be real. You guys made it. Oh, number one. I didn't give a fuck about number one, number two. Yeah, it does not matter as long as you say my name. You know what I mean? Uh, hold on. Is it is it freezing? Are we freezing out here? Night out, doggy. One potato. Oh, 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 oh. I got night out on my shoulder. Doggy, night out. Doggy, night out. <laughs> that's the fame. That's that's the real famous night out dog. Where you at, homie? Oh shit. Anyways, this whole conversation, no mom is winning. You get this at lowprofilerecords.com. Some people haven't. Let me see. Let me see. Royalty take over. Um, Jim, give me some questions. I'm gonna get Night Out back on here in a minute. <clears throat> but uh, look, hey homie, inbox me. You want us to go on your on your podcast? Inbox me. We definitely will get there. Look, it. I'm not here to hate on Tony. I'm very passionate what I've done, M meaning music. I'm being honest. You you guys cared about Chicano rap. And you don't have to, if you don't like royalty, it's okay. But all the people I worked for, worked with, 
at being beautiful people. At the end of the day, every guy, no matter if we hate each other now, we really have good love, good chemistry. For everyone that worked with Low Pro or any of the labels, me, Toker, you guys, we were friends behind the scenes. So I'm just here to say, um, I'm hoping Nigel comes back on. Doggy, where you at? Come back on. Um, but I'm just here to say, like, Tony, you can still call me up. And, and uh, because I've only stated facts, my boy. People get at me because I don't know how to lie. I don't know how to make things. I just, I say it boldly up front. And I'm like, let me see, what your relationship with IBM from true? Man, I was my best friend in the world. I got, I mean, one of his pictures, uh, I, I, I paid for his cremation, cremation when he died. And um, I had his one-year-old daughter's birthday party at my house that, that year. You know, we, we were just young boys. I mean, we, uh, in fact, a day before he died, I took him to Easy's because Easy wanted to sign him. <clears throat> and that, those are fucking facts. And we, we actually stopped at Oceanside. Uh, Del Taco, <laughs> I'm fat, you know, and we sat there and he started telling me all kind of stuff, all kind of stuff about life. And he was sorry for some of the things that me and him got into some shit with some other people and, and all kind of shit. And then the next day he died, homie, on New Year's. And it was just, it, 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 he was my best friend. Like, that's what I'm saying. People, I had a, one of Miss Sanchez's friends said, is World Team racist? Man, he always talking about black. No, no, not at all. See, sometimes black people hear the word black and they think everyone's racist. I'm like, hey, homie, not everything is black. I'm sorry. I'm only Chicano. I speak for my people. So when Mexicans go on podcasts and they're like, oh, class still going. Me, me, Mr. D and Capone, we're talking. Okay, we are talking and I'm talking with everybody. Even Kid Frost. I want to do a sit down with me, Kid Frost, and Night Out. Me, Kid Frost, Mr. D. I want to, uh, we all deserve flowers. There's and not... I could say take all the credits that I built Chicago Rap, which I did a lot of work behind the scenes, everything. But it, it 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 was a whole a whole lot of us working hard in different ways that made this game that Tony shows no respect to time and time again. Like, homie, if someone's gonna come to your fucking podcast, take 20 minutes out of your fucking time, go look them up, read about them, check out some of the music. Check about some of their videos. See what the fuck's going on and ask them. Hey, I heard this one song. Even if you don't like it, respect. Because you're the one making money. You're the one benefiting to your podcast. And tell them, hey, brother, hey, I heard that one song. So where did you record this? You know, give them some, give them some insight. If anyone tells I'm not Mexican, let me see. I'm going to kick their ass and shit. Uh, can't believe Tony a hustle, you fools. He looks like he didn't give a fuck about Chicano rap. Well, hey, you guys donated a lot of money, and we're not going to be on that DVD, so you guys should ask GoFundMe for your money back. And that's not even the personal money. I know we spent it. Have you guys talked? Uh, Night Owl called Cornell. Night Owl, where you at, doggy? I'm on the phone now. I don't know where Night Owl's at. Maybe his phone died. He'll be back right now. Hey, homie, call Night Owl. Night Owl Live just cut off, man. Well, call him back. Tell him to call me. I'm out here live. Homie, I can't jump off. Alonzo. My homie, Alonzo. Sandy Pants. I'm going to invite someone on right now. Hey. What's up, Sandy Pants? What's up? How are you? Hello. Can you All hear right. me? My bad. Uh, not, nice to meet you. I've never met you before. I know. I've never met you before. Nice to meet you. I'm um, sorry. Nice I was trying to run away from the, my family over there. Okay. Okay. Well, how are you yeah. doing? I'm all right. I'm a little nervous for what's going to be exposed tomorrow. I actually talked to Night Out right now, which I've never met him before. Okay. Um, because I know there's some rumors out there saying that I had met him. I've never met him before. Um, who I met was Mr. Shadow, but I met Mr. Shadow at a show um, out in Oxnard with Conejo. So I, okay. I got a little confused at the beginning. But um, from what I'm about to expose tomorrow, there is evidence that backs me up. Um, 
Nidal already has the evidence in his hands. And I mean, it's just, I don't expect everybody to believe me, but what was done to me, I don't even wish that upon his own daughters or his own granddaughter that no, he never speaks of. Because if you go back on his page, he posts nothing but the twin boys. He's never spoken about his granddaughter. Well, um, I'm sorry. Look, at, I grew up mm -hmm. with all women, okay? Mm -hmm. So I don't play that bullshit. I, I, none of that stuff. Um, I, you know, when you're, uh, I say, I found out things later of family members that things have happened to, and it really pisses me off. Um, I'm not, like I'm telling you, allegations, I'm, this is my show, I'm not going to go crazy till I see evidence. And, and the, you know what I mean? I'm not going to say I don't believe anyone. Or any of that mm -hmm. stuff. I'm, I'm I'm not here for, for that fully. I, I, I. Uh, right. But I, I feel for you. If anything happened, you know what I'm saying. Uh, mm -hmm. I've seen today. I heard a stupid thing. You could see on the Cypress Hill thing. I couldn't believe he said, "Oh, he said, have you ever smoked weed?" And Tony said, "Oh, the first time I smoked weed is because I wanted to fuck with this girl. She was and I was 17 and I got her high, to fuck her. And I ended up getting too high. I could have fucked." He said that today. That was kind of weird to me. Like, bro, what the fuck are you saying? Why do you got to get a girl high to fuck? You know what I mean? I usually got to get drunk so I don't remember you. No, I'm joking. <laughs> I don't remember yeah. you, girl. I'm married. Leave me alone. You know, <laughs> you know I'm, I'm glad you're bringing that up because a lot of people do confuse my personality as my boobs are always out. It doesn't, but if, it doesn't matter like if you're naked in the model. No one does. No is no. Zero, zero, zero. I mean, I mean, look at you guys know if you watch the Miss Sancha video shoot and you'll know about me. I had around six models that I paid. So I had stacks of money. I got, you know, I got, you know, girls are attracted to all the fame and the money. It's easy. It's easy. And you could ask any of those girls. They all wrote me and thanked me. Oh, you were so professional. Cause I, 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 I have granddaughters. I have, I have, you know, I have, look. I have two sons. Thank God, no daughters. But I have my sisters, my mom, and I just, I even with my homies, I, I talk crazy and I'm go bananas and ah, and I make crazy shit. Let me tell you, I used to shoot porno. I'm gonna change subject because you know I go, and do you know why I didn't put out those pornos? Mm -hmm. I said it before, but. Why? Because I didn't know how to tell my mom I was going to put out porno. You know what I'm saying? I was, like, I was like, oh, shit. I thought I was a big, badass dude. I'm paying for these people. I'm filming this shit. I'm having fun. I'm faded. I'm laughing. I'm having dinner. People are naked and shit. I'm at the casinos at the top of the Caesars Palace. I'm, 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 I'm being ridiculous because I had so much money. Right. And then I became a little boy when I thought, how the fuck do I tell my mom? You know what I'm saying? And and then yeah. girls started calling in. Oh, I got a new boyfriend. He's gonna be. I, I, I said, "Bitch, I already paid you. you Sign these papers. I have your ID." Yeah. And I just said, "You know what? Not worth it. Too much drama." Mm -hmm. And so, back to my story with these girls at the video shoot. They hit me up because I, I, you know, like you think I'm crazy and I talk bananas. Like a guy brings a, a fine ass girlfriend. Like say a guy brings a girlfriend to my studio and I'm working on him. Right. And the girlfriend is like. Wow, not not that I'm the ugliest dude in the world, but they're like, oh, that. And when I speak, they're like, that's a man. Like, their husband, their man is looking at me like, you know, girls follow their guys, and if their guys is following the this guy, he becomes more attracted to that girl because girls like a boss at the end of the day. You know what I'm saying? Right. Some, 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 and I never even look at dudes' girls. And I, I like if a girl sitting here, and it's not my girl, and and it's this my homie's girl, I'm gonna be like. I'll talk to this girl, but I'm kind of more talking to him because I just don't disrespect. You know what right. I'm saying? Exactly. It just it's it's like it's like me. I talk a lot of shit. If people go back on my interviews, the shit I post on Instagram, I have a big mouth. I like mm -hmm. to be fun. I like to be, you know, I like to talk a lot of shit just like you do. But this is where a lot of people are gonna be like, "What is she playing? Is she serious?" No, like what was done to me. Of course, we're gonna say as allegations because you haven't seen it yet, and I. You know, I can't wait till Night Out shows you the evidence that I have. Um, you know, but it's just a lot to process. 
it's been hard the last two weeks and I've kept it professional. I can talk a lot of shit, but I can, me and you can have a whole ass episode talking dirty shit back and forth. But at the end of the day, I'm going to shake your hand professionally because that's what I am at the end of the day. Very of professional. course, me too. You know, you know I, so it's, it's all about respect at the end of the day. And some people don't see that. Some people see past that and think that it's something completely when it's not even there. Well, I talked to Tony's brother. He's told me a lot of stuff. And he told me, bro, you, you, I, 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 and I told Tony this. I said, hey, brother, I totally disrespected him and blah, 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 blah. And I said, look, you, know, you guys are brothers. I have two sons. I believe in karma. I'm not going to get in between you guys because you're brothers. You know what I'm saying? Like, like right. but there's been, Tony's got a little too cocky to block me. It, 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 and I'm not, I ain't shit. But Chicano rap, I am. In the world, I ain't shit. But in Chicano rap, hey, I'm royalty. You know? I, uh, give me a little I, bit. I grew up, I grew up knowing. Exactly. I mean, I almost, I, I've been shot. I've been shot at a million times. Crazy drama. So this I take very seriously. So uh, when I see a dude, like I said this earlier, let's say you're doing, and, and I'm, I'll just give, I'm going to make myself look a little cute. Ready? If, you, <laughs> if you're filming a documentary about Tom Cruise when he's younger, when he's cuter and shit, I, I could run him underwear and I'll slide across the room. But, uh, you know, <laughs> my tante runs, you know, my, my the skinny legs, fat body, Mexican. You know, anyways, um, and my weight might pull me and hit the wall and break the wall down, but that's a different story. Anyways, <laughs> um, and then you block Tom Cruise. What kind of documentary do you have? Nothing. How did you collect money to film Tom Cruise from the fans, and then you're missing. And I'm not the only Tom Cruise. Maybe Shadow's one of the bun cheeks. Little one's one of the bun cheeks. Uh, um, uh, um, Kid Frost is just a crack. Mr. D's the Chi-Chi's. You know what I mean? I'm just a face. You know what I'm saying? <laughs> but, and, and you're missing the whole Tom Cruise. You robbed everybody. Yeah. I mean, you got cocky for nothing because not one. Look, he's been a black rap DJ his whole life. No big deal. Beautiful. But you have never, they never wanted to support you. I know I talked to DJ Quick. He don't like you, homie. I talked to a lot of black. He says they don't want to come. They just don't like Tony. These are facts. We came there smiling, shaking hands, giving giving love, showing respect, doing nothing, not charging, not even talking. We're telling him how to make more money. Night was the one that told him to take, and he didn't even get the credit, and I'm the one that came with money, the first one to buy ads. And night, I was the one that used to charge ads, homie. You know, make more money for yourself. Because right. he makes his living only out this. How you see, he ain't giving him no money. So, no one's what? hating. We're telling the truth. And, I look, I would have never came on tonight. But Tony blocked me and then hated me. Like, hey, homie, he talks about the voice. <laughs> you, you can never shut this mouth up. You That's, know? I'm going to drop a little bomb tonight just because I already figured out the situation. When I spoke to him a while back, and this is a fact, he mentioned when he was working on this documentary, when he released the flyer, he said, Sandy, can you post it, support? Of course, I got you. Let me post it real quick. I had a conversation with him where he said, Cypress Hill, and this is something I don't know, I don't know if it's true, was gonna record a documentary or something similar and have the fans donate. And afterwards, there was no documentary. So with that being said, he made off a lot of money off a lot of you guys. And there will be no documentary. And I can guarantee my life on that. Because nothing has been recorded. And nothing. this is shit. Nothing. And there That's will when be he blocked no me. I asked. I asked. And he got mad and blocked me. We got to go home. Yeah. And when you going to you going to interview me? You know? And he had to show me no new cameras to show up. Like, hey, I got these new cameras. Zero, and, I, and that's when he doesn't understand. This is my life. Tony, you know okay, I'm reading the comments, and somebody said, "Be real," would have called out Tony on that. That's a conversation me and Tony had in private, not something. Hold on, that hold, he on. Told hold, on. hold on. So, be real when it called him. Be real got scared. Be real got checked because he thought we were behind Tony. Tony, go watch. Tony checked him. Me and Night Out were the first ones. They fuck. Be real. And then Tony shitted on us, and he's stuck in that dude's dick. And he wanted, look at, I'm going to let you guys know something today. Them worthless motherfuckers that no one gives a fuck about. You guys forget how big Chicano rap was. We ran the whole West Coast, period. 
every fucking mom and dad store, mom and pop, the alleys, alley, alley, all Chicano rap, bootleg, everything. Because we ran the whole fucking system. So what I'm trying to say is all Tony's black artists have had lower, lower ratings than all of us. They're supposed to be so much more famous. They're supposed to be humongous. But we're murdering them even with unknown Chicano rappers. So uh, I'm faded. I'm faded. But I, I was going to go tell you. So um, about Cypress Hill, he has 700,000 followers, subscribers on his, on his show. Uh, Tony has more than me. I have no one. I, 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 my, my, shit, I, I wasn't a, my mom died. I stopped. That's when social media started. I'm low on it. I'm, I'm back. You guys got me. And now I'm talking shit. I'm low T. So these two motherfuckers today went on. Tony tried to beat me so bad. He was, his t brother told me, hey, Roy, he fucking hates your guts. He's our, uh, what do you call it? When he, he wants to be the man and I outshined him. I only reason I did that, I could turn it on. I could turn it off. I turned it on because I looked in his eyes. And he asked me, he knew nothing about me. Zero. He just wanted to know drama with me and little Rob. He wanted to raise, but he didn't give a fuck about me. So I said, I'm going to take this motherfucker on a five-hour journey. <laughs> because, and, and people are, oh, we're mad. Why don't you talk too much? Motherfucker, I'm on an interview. Am I supposed to shut up and be as boring as these other stupid motherfuckers that you ask most questions? So tell me about your life. I had a life. You know what I mean? I'm like, hell no. And I just, I took him there and he was just mm, mm, mad and he knew he couldn't do nothing. He could be as mad as he wants. I had homie from the cartel, homie from, I mean, all kind of shit there. I brought him food. I made him feel like a king. And the motherfucker didn't respect me. So, so when in the next interview, when he brought Be Real, when he punked Be Real, made Be Real go on there. Mm hmm. Be real, them should have beat me like this. I just laughed. They made me number one. And everyone's like, well, I was going to commit suicide. But dude, behind the scenes, because you only see subscribers. So he had one point. I had 1.7. Be real at 1.3 to 1.4. But behind the scenes, I had 10,400. Be real at 6,300. So, Tony, if you guys kept seeing Tony shake the guy's hand on Facebook, Be Real's hand, that's, those are called paid ads when you can no longer like it because when you pay an ad, they could only accept one like from you because then they would oh. pay the ads. You get what I'm saying? Yeah. So that's why you kept seeing it and you couldn't click it no more. But Tony was paying ads because he wanted the black artists and Hollywood They thought because they know Be Real. Be Real is a hall of walk of fame. I don't. You know, I have a land. I, I cut my grass myself sometimes, you know. I have my maybe a trophy for Lawnmower Man. I don't know. But anyway, he has walk of fame. I mean, he fucked Carmen Electra. The man is Hollywood. I'm not disrespecting him, you know what I mean? You know, uh, maybe Carmen that one to fuck me. Who knows? That's just a rumor. Rumor. Uh, what, what, what I say? What I call that? Um, I can't say claim it. Whatever. Whatever. Uh, allegations. I know. <laughs> allegations. So, yeah. So I go. I got that from Wendy Williams. But anyways, um, let's get to um, back to. So then today's show, Tony for sure. I'm gonna be on Be Real's channel and I'm gonna smash royalty. They still only got to 1.3. On a fucking podcast that has 700,000 followers. You both are sorry. You both are a fat, ugly motherfucker that in Tony's world, Chicago rap doesn't exist. Still beats you? God damn it. Go ahead, Sandy. Yeah. And you know what? I'm going to ask you something. I'm going to tell you something I've been wanting to tell you. <laughs> and, I, and, I, and, I, and I'm still a... Uh, uh, I still a... Uh, even though I tell you how I really feel, but I'm still royalty. I still, my eyes are still like this, you know? And I, I asked Tony many times ago, hey, bro, what up to that girl you had? Because I saw a long time ago, you were like the first girl to interview the girls. And I, because I would call him and I would talk about the show. I mean, so much, so much writing email kind of shit. And mm -hmm. I would talk, like, I, I, I was very interested and exciting about the whole show. And I, um, because I used to do LPG radio for like 15 years. And I was and, and, and I was out of the game and I was excited. So I go, hey, who's that girl, man? And I, I saw her and I go, man, she, you know, um, she has cheeches like mine. You know what I'm saying? I was, you know, <laughs> I was like, are we twins? You know, can I interview the girls too? You know, I, I, I thought maybe, I thought it was cool, you know? Oh, right. uh, and then he was like throwing you off and like it never happened. I'm like, am I stupid? I saw this girl interview people, right? Am, am I... 
am I lying? Am I, am, you know, yeah. but I just went I, and was I, there. Yeah, I had him on my show, Sandy's mm -hmm. Insights. I had my own studio. Um, my studio was shut down because my producer moved to Seattle. So that kind of stopped. But I'm also associated with that. Of Seattle? My producer went to Seattle. Oh. But that's where... I was I had my original studio and that's where I interviewed Tony. I was I didn't even know who Tony was until one of my homeboys that's a producer introduced me to him. So I got a question. When that, yeah. Not to cut you off, because they're gonna say, mm -hmm. well, well, let her talk. Um did um I thought what from what I've heard, didn't you meet Tony, you were Kid Frost's girlfriend? Yes. And you met when, him through that? I and dated Kid Frost last year, and me and Kid Frost, I had a uh, miscarriage, and things with Kid Frost didn't end well. A couple they never of months. Do. No. <laughs> I, I, yeah. So I, when I had you that love Kid Frost, he said so perfect when he needs you, and then. And then boom. Boom. Yeah. So I was, I was with Frost. I was with Frost. I had a miscarriage. It was public. Everybody knew I was with Sorry him. Sorry to hear that. Um, thank you. And then a couple months later, I met Tony. And then Tony found out because at one of the events where I met Tony, Frost was there and Frost kept dogging him. But I didn't know until afterwards that him and Frost had drama before me. Me, when I came around the picture, you know, because Tony said, I'm going to help you. I'm going to help you in this industry. A lot of people respect me. You're going to need my help. I said, okay, cool. I went under his wing. And this is when he was not known, really. Yeah, but I thought because, you know, I'm new to the industry, I figured, yeah, he's going to help me. He has my back. Was it the steroids? They got you? <laughs> <laughs> not at all. He Remember, asked me one time. these ain't all the real muscles you always need sometimes. You know <laughs> Just between me and you, he <laughs> asked me one time if I found him attractive, and I said, nah. I'm sorry. <laughs> okay, so let's just leave it at that. But... With Frost, he would tell I me. I don't want you to lie in the show. No, we'll not at all. That. This is this is <laughs> all facts. To this guy. No, <laughs> no this is all facts. And um, I believed him. I trusted him. I would go to the show. He would tell me, "Oh, don't post pictures because Frost is going to take down my page." Um, that's not true. As time went went going, that was not true. His page was taken taken down several times because he deactivated his account. His account was never reported. Me, myself, and a bunch of other people have reported other pages, especially in the Armenian community, people that talk shit are racist and all kinds of weird oh, you're, shit. you're Armenian? No, I'm Mexican, but I'm oh. I'm like really, really big with them. I support them, especially not too long I ago when they had of, war going Armenian, on. Armenian, as I tell you, I could have took this DVD and had it made in, I know all the Armenians and I know all the big ones that got big money and, and my homies and uh, they ain't no joke. You know, I mean, the beautiful people. I've been to a lot of Armenian uh, weddings, a lot of many, many funerals. One of my best, I got a picture of one of my best friends who did all the Chicano rap CDs were done by Armenians. Mac 10, Ice Cube, all of them were done by Armenians. But go ahead. Yeah. But yeah, so with um, Tony, that's bullshit. He was just getting caught up in his shit and he deactivated several accounts and tried to blame me for that. So not, when not I was Huh? Uh, not to cut you off, not to cut you off, because I want to give you a full interview, especially when we start the whole podcast. But yeah. I want to see Night Owl. Are you there, Night Owl? Because Night Owl, someone told me he just came back in. He came back? Okay, I'll let you go. No, and no, but let me see. Night Owl, are you there? Send me an invite, Mike. Night Owl. Look, girl, inbox me. I'm going to call you after the show. We're going to do, we'll see what you do tomorrow. We'll talk. Glad. I, I, I'm happy to meet you. Happy to um, meet you as well. Thank I, you. I, I, I've never met you. I, I didn't know you before this. Uh, Night Owl told me about you. And, uh, you know, let me see. Royalty keep uh, cutting her off. Well, this it's is okay. not her interview. I'm going to give her an interview, and I'm going to put tape on my mouth and, and so I can't talk. You know what I mean? Girls like that. They put a little bomb milk. You know? <laughs> I'll be tied up and she. Uh, no, yeah, no, I'll, I'll be on the live you're watching, but I appreciate you for taking the time to talk oh. to me. I'll talk to you. I'll let you know what's the situation All for right. tomorrow. I talked to Toker one time, and he told me Frost went down. I, there's a whole... Look it. Look it. You guys know me and Frost have had our way differences. 
I, I worked with Frost. Um, but you know, at the end of the day, if I want to break down, I could we could break down all of you motherfuckers are assholes. Because all you guys are going to go tomorrow, Tony's be like, Tony, Tony, guess what we heard? You know, mm -hmm. I see Magic Girl. I see Be Scandalous on this motherfucker. Miss Sanchez, girl's mad at you, Be Scandalous. You were kind of, she told you she was lesbian. You just kept getting at her. But another day, another time. Uh, so, I mean, there's a lot of things we could go on. I Look at I never had hate for Tony. I'm going to tell you. I never disrespected him. I brought him stuff. I've heard rumors. And I said, you know, I'm just too old for this shit. I don't, and do I hear it or see it? I, 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 I'm going to be, I'm going to try to be an adult, not Chicano rap. Like, people don't understand. Like, what Tony don't understand is like this. I'm royalty. Me and I doubt. You don't understand. When it comes to drama, we fucking love it. We seen it. It's like a fucking needle in our fucking vein. We've almost been killed. We've been to many fucking meetings. We've been many fucking places that none of you motherfuckers ever want to go to. And this turns me on. So if you think you're going to fuck my life over talking about my life, I don't give a fuck who you know, who you got to call. But this is personal. You're talking about my life. You don't know my life. <laughs> All right, girl. Nice meeting you. I'm nice gonna you well. We're gonna set up, we're gonna set up the the new podcast, the LPG Radio Royalty for President podcast. And I definitely want. You, I don't want you on there for. Let me tell you, I don't want you on there for drama. Mm -hmm. I want you because you you are, uh, from what I see, a Latina that's been putting it down, trying to do. I've seen your podcast. I'm like, she never hit me up. You know. <laughs> Well, I was told that I couldn't hit you up because you wouldn't do an interview with me because I'm a nobody. Who said this? No other than the legendary man himself. That That is so unbelievable. I'm going to tell you like this. I, I, I'll give it, I'll throw it out there right now. If you could get me and Miss Sancho, I'm here for girl power. Like, girl power. I, you know, people don't know. I've been married this whole fucking time. I don't, I don't, it, it, like this. You know, some girls want to pay for me. <laughs> but anyway, me and Miss Sacha, we're willing to go to air, a small podcast, big podcast. Thank you. Thank you. You know Thank what I mean? You. And, and, and it doesn't matter. Like, I'm here to talk shit. I'm here to get people pissed off. I'm here to get people horny. I'm here to, to get people more pissed off and cut people off. And then them go, then they, you know what they say when they see me talk? Fucking guy. But they can't turn it off. They can't fucking turn it off. You know what I mean? So, Thank girl, you. I wish you the Thank best. You. Inbox Thank me. You. I would, and if you know any podcast for Miss Sancha, not for Royalty only, or Miss Sancha also, please, we, 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 we would love your help. We would love it. We're trying to get this movement back, and it's not easy because mm -hmm. even the Mexicans want to be black now. And it's not racist. I'm just here for black. I mean, <laughs> I'm here. For Mexican people, my Chicanos, that's it. Hey, on. I'm, I'm going to find Nido. Tell Nido, send me requests. I'm going to get her off. Girl. Thank you. Please Thank inbox you. me. Please find me things. And I hope nothing but the best for your life, for yourself. I appreciate you. I'm sorry if anything has happened to you. Um, we'll, we'll tune in tomorrow. Thank Let you. me know. I'll tune in. Definitely. Thank you. Thank you. Have a good night, girl. Have a good hey, night. Cover those chichis. Oh, they're covered. <laughs> bye, 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 bye. Peace. Let me see. All right, everybody. Where's my boy, Mr. Night Out? Night Out, I'm sorry. A woman came on. I can't stop talking. You know what I mean? You know, you know what I mean? Let me see. Night Out, doggy, where you at? One potato. Oh, 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 oh. Two potatoes. Oh, 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 oh. <laughs> Let the fuck that fucking guy. Uh, Rasa, that's what's up. Black should get. Uh, look at, look at. Let me see what we have. Do you request? Oh, Mr. Night Owl. Doggy. I seen your request, my doggy. Yeah, I'm going to put a lot of the pornos on the on the fans. What, what's happening, homeboy? Sorry, homie. A, 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 a beautiful. No, nah, it's all right. It's all right. I was just. Uh...
checking out the whole scenario. It was all good, homie. Hey, you know, yeah. I'm not here to make drama. That's why I want to talk to her about herself. You know what I'm saying? Right, right. I'm not a fighter. I'm a lover. <laughs> <laughs> Calm down, Zeus. <laughs> yeah. So anyways, what happened? Your phone just died on me? Yeah, my phone died, homie, while we were chopping it up, and then uh, you got Sandy Pants on, and then I just listened for a while, and I figured when you get off, I'll get back on, you know what I mean? Okay, okay, I'm sorry it went on and on, but... No, nah, it's all good, homie, don't trip, dog. You know, I just wanted the fans to hear a little bit of what's going on. Now, you know, people are most... I just got a bunch of messages from a bunch of fans. I got at least 50 different messages on my DM from fans that were saying, wow, now it all makes sense. That dude's a piece of shit. And all kinds of DMs that I'm getting where people are realizing that he never was about the Chicanos and about the movement. He was about himself, about taking everybody's money. And that's about it, bro. He really wasn't about doing anything for anybody. He's yet to shoot a fucking scene for the documentary, bro. Nothing. What the fuck? And I saw the documentary today. I was like, you guys are, are, are excited over an L.A. Oriental bootlegger? The fuck is that, homie? I shut down your fucking stand, put my music on your bootleg. I say, get the fuck out of here with the bootlegs. That was bootleg, homie. Yeah. yeah. It was. It was. But what I'm saying... He ain't did nothing for the Chicano rap documentary, my boy. Not one fucking scene has he done, bro. And he's collected all kinds of money. How many when times he was at fifteen, online, people don't know our names on there. How many times you donated online when he's having people on there? Oh man, I've had people fucking donate a lot of money, bro. And, and I'm just like I hey, myself. You know that? Like, uh huh. I, I, I we we. We're not here to support his lifestyle. No, nah, no. Nah. We were supporting a movement for our people. We were doing something for our fans, bro, because that's what we care about. But obviously, he doesn't. He took advantage of all the fans that gave money. He fucking basically spit in their face, kept their money, and said, fuck you. I'm gonna ask that's, exactly, that's exactly what he did. I'm going to ask a question to the fans right here. Because I, I don't want you guys to right. get off and think that, that we're haters or not. But I mean... Nah, me ain't Night nobody out, hating. We didn't steal from them, you know, dog. But look, if me and Night Out are not... We're blocked from him from really no reason just having an opinion. If we're blocked, would you guys want to watch a documentary without us, about Chicano Rap, without us, Mr. D, uh, Shadow, Little One, uh, Kid Frost? Frost. How could you watch a, without Tony G? How could you watch a documentary with a Chicano rap documentary and pay for that? Without all of us. Do you, do you guys tell me? Do you guys want to see a documentary Chicano rap without us? Give me honest. What what the hell would they be watching, homie? Tony and his son driving around in a, someone's borrowed car. I don't know. That's crazy, bro. Yeah. I, I, I didn't know how much. I, I watched that thing tonight. I didn't know how much you could suck dick to one guy making bootlegs. And, and everyone was like, oh, yeah. And they kept saying the same thing. And then you would see Tony drive around for like a 20 minutes. But they're playing a mixtape. And they come back. And the same black dude just say, oh, yeah. They, it was a movement, man. We we went there, man. And it was cool, man. The mixes was awesome. And, man, they take our music and steal it and put on a cassette and sell it. And then if you need a record, man, this, this, you know, you know the, the chink man would just go in and copy that shit and have it next week for you. The stores didn't have it, you know. It's a bootleg. I mean, if you guys, you guys talk shit about me for years. This artist, but then you go over there happy that a motherfucker's. You guys are praising. It's, it's like bootleg. You guys to swap me, then you see the Koreans. They bootleg everything: Louis Vuitton, cassettes, music, DVDs. There you go. And I'm gonna be honest. Frank B. Proper Dole's Mexican Power. At that time, when I signed Frank, that record had 458,000 copies. Frank B never made over $2,000 from Steve Yano. The most money he's, he's ever made was from me. You can ask Mr. D about that. 
Yeah. So, you know, we could go to Fenmore. And I was like, you don't remember the Fenmore man, the bootleg everything at the Swami? Right, right. The Chino? That's like, yeah, I remember there, that. And we make a documentary film about that guy. You know what I mean? Yeah, Mr. Store, you, could <laughs> you know what I mean? You, you could buy hair pieces in the Mexican, bro. They were buying three flowers up in the front with a little comb and shit. And then if you needed a mixtape of Rick James, bitch, you know, you go to the back and order that shit. <laughs> <laughs> and if he didn't have that one, next week that motherfucker duplicated, he'd have that young Latino boy over there just wrap that motherfucker up. So next week you could have a cassette of anybody you wanted, man. <laughs> <laughs> you know I mean? So I don't know. I'm not excited. But Steve Yano, yeah, I, I, Steve Yano gets props. He opened up Scandalous. He did a lot of other records after that. But it was all, it, it was bull. Like, I'm just laughing. I talk my shit. You can't. Let me see. Let me see. Homie should text his ass. Let me see. Man, I miss Famor. Famor. Famor not open. I haven't been over there. Uh, I'm right. I'm lost here. What happened was Tony. What happened was he blocked me, me and Nigel because we had a opinion of, like, when you're going to start filming this documentary, homie, you took over 50 grand from our people. We've donated money, and you haven't filmed. Because I would ask him, hey, when you're going to film us? I would call Mr. D. Has he filmed yet? Hey, Nigel, has he filmed you? Shadow, has he filmed you? No, 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 no. What the fuck's going on? Yeah, so so... Basically, he robbed all the fans, homie. Mm -hmm. He robbed all the fans. He just fucking took their money, bro, and spit in their face, bro. That's fucked up. We're going to start our documentary. We're going to write. Now that we need to start writing down real questions. Uh, yeah. You know what I mean? And yeah. we, we could all get it in. Well, I want to see you in your studio. Uh, I, I want to see Shadow in his studio up there, Pistol Pete. I want to see, you know, you, you with all your beats that you you. Uh, I know you and Chris Gunn. I mean, you have a lot of history. You know what I mean? Other right. There, Royal got jokes. No, I'm telling you, I'm, I, my jokes are honest, though. <laughs> it's, just, it's just more funny when it's more real like it is. Let me see. Also, Little Spot, Pacific Boulevard, uh, Huntington Park, Van Mar. All right, what's up? What happened to Kilo is doing his thing? Um, uh, that's about it. Let me see. They closed. Swap, yeah, Oceanside, Mr. Ken Harris, rest in peace. So, anyways, night out. What, what, what you been, what you been doing today, homie? I just relaxing, dog. I had a little issue. I had to go pick up one of the cars uh, with the mechanic. They was trying to play stupid, homie, and we finally got it here just a little while ago. My girl actually, while I was right here, she went over there, man. I had to call a truck, a tow truck, to go get the car and bring it over here because. He was supposed to do some work on it, and he didn't do it. Did and we got the car back over here, huh? Did you get your car? Yeah, yeah, we got it over here. How did you get the over there? That guy parked it all crooked and shit. How did you get the yeah, car? Yeah, homie, so we had to, the tow truck had to go do his thing, man, and uh, we got it over here. That's the 48, own, but. You guys don't understand, Nino has a car lot at his house. <laughs> he, just <laughs> some, he just bought four fucking classics. Tell us some of the classics you got, Nido. Uh, I got a 51 Merc. 51 Merc. Fucking beautiful green. Beautiful, yes, yeah, dope. Got a 62 Galaxy. It's fucking off the hinges. Got the 48. Then we got a fucking real nice Regal. Man, the Regal and is then... mine, motherfucker. Came out Regal. <laughs> that Regal is hard. And, and then we, we, we right now, we're, 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 uh, going through the process of maybe picking up a G wagon. So I don't know, you know, I love, I love cars, man. My girl likes cars too. So, you know, we, we about to do that. I don't know. I, I still got to talk and chop it up with you. We're supposed to get matching G wagons. So I don't know what we're going to do yet, you know, but I know, I'm we, we, we're going to do something man right now. I'm, I'm, Cause I already got my cars, but, but I need a people for tour for next year. So I'm thinking about the, the new Escalade, which not enough people in there. Um, what what I got that, but I'm saying I I I think I need a van. I think I think I need a van because my crap. Uh, I know I know I know why you want a van. I ain't gonna say why, but I already know. <laughs> you you know already. You know the other van. <laughs> you know, my girl said, "Yeah, you gotta escalate already." 
No, yeah, yeah. Why the fuck uh, do you need a van? I said because the Escalade only holds one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight people. When we're going to Albuquerque, El Paso, all these places, we take around eleven people. You know, and then the the, the Mercedes vans had the bed in the back. You can rest. And you can, you can rest, or you can, you or can you can rest. exercise too. Night out, you can rest. Yeah. All right. Okay. Side, take a nap. You know. <laughs> <laughs> but anyways, so someone said, "Night out, nightmare album, favorite song, Afraid to Die." Got me th- rough. T- got me through rough times. L.A. Neta. As the homie Bet Bet Lokes, Bet Lokes, I think. Yeah, yeah. That's cool. That's cool. Much love, homeboy. Much love. All right. Well, look, night out. We had a hell of a, a hell of a night. Um, I'm very disappointed with Tony, homie. I talked to his son. I let his son know, hey, I love your family. I love you guys. And I just, I right. refuse to be disrespected. You know, this is your kind of right. right. Likewise, you homie. Fuck. You got likewise, me man. Up. That's bullshit, bro. Hey, you got me fucked up if you think we fucking punks, homie. You got me twisted, homie. You know what I mean? Yeah, uh, he's, I don't know, dog. He's just on some other shit right now. And, uh, you know, he lost real friends, bro, by being stupid. You know what I mean? But that's that's him, though, you know? That's what he chose to do, so fuck him, dog. I mean, did you see yeah. when I called in on the last time? He's like, get this fucking guy off the phone. Hey, homie, who are you talking to, homie? Right. You fuck about your steroid muscles, homie? Don't get me twisted. Like, I, I'm, you know what I mean? Like, I, I, you, you, you talk to me with respect. I talk to you with respect. Respect me too. You know what I mean? Like, like I, I, right. I, I've shown nothing but love. Uh, exactly, homie. Yeah. So, Chris Gunn, BMF need to produce an entire album for y'all. Yes, they do. Man, imagine, you know what we got to do now? Huh? We should take them into the studio together. Right. God damn it. That'd be some shit. But they might make the first few tracks kind of whack because they're almost similar guys. They're all, that they'll be comp- I don't know. What do you think? I don't know. I, it, it's just yet to be seen, bro. You know what I mean? Yeah, that's, that's crazy, huh? I mean, it will be pretty fucking so interesting. And different, but they're so similar because both of their drums are banging. Right. Both of their keys are banging. So I was like, who does what? You know what I'm saying? I'm trying to... Right, right. Like, they they kind of both self-sufficient. I, 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 yeah. I, I want to know. I, I, all we could do is... uh, Fuck, you know what we should go do? End of this year, we should... uh, We should uh set it up where... You know, in Las Vegas, at top of the palm, they have a badass studio. Right? Right. It's like 150,000, right. I mean, 150 bucks an hour. I got that. Right. Um, uh, maybe one day we should, uh, we both come in half and we fucking um, go spend three days out, get them up both a room, and we go out there, get some sweets, and we just all go take everyone and film that shit. Right. Because, you know, you ran out that big studio. I thought, like, Britney Spears, everyone records there. Like, it's, they have every fucking equipment, Pro Tools, everything, you know? Right. That'd be, that'd be a take a good ass camera, dude. I'm an incredible fucking weekend. You know what I mean? Yeah, it'd be dope. Yeah, we should take me, you, Shadow, little one. See, we come up, take we'll take biz. You know? <laughs> yeah, it'd be dope. Yeah. Hell yeah. All right, homie. Well, look. All right, my boy. My ass fucking already getting tired, man. I'm about to shut down, homie, and get some rest, man. All right, homies. You know, but uh, likewise. We'll talk to you guys tomorrow. Stay tuned. Night Elf's going to have his own podcast. Tell him what your podcast is going to be called, Night Elf. It's going to be called Ritmo Urbano. And what it is, it's uh, me and Shadow. We got that podcast coming. And uh, if you guys follow uh, the biggest magazine in Mexico that's followed by millions, it's titled Ritmo Urbano. And they've created a podcast in which they made me and Shadow the executives of the podcast, and we're going to be running it. And uh, all those millions of people that follow that magazine 
are going to eventually follow that podcast. So it's going to be a very big podcast that is going to interview artists from out here and big names from Mexico. We already got the first two interviews scheduled. The first two is going to be Neto Reino and Secan. You look them up, they both get anywhere from 10 to 50 million views uh, on their tracks. So, you know, they, they, they doing it, man, you know, and uh, they need to be known out here the way we're known out here. But, you know, we're, we're known out there and some of them ain't known over here and we're going to expand their fan base out here because they're that dope. You know what I mean? Out there in Mexico, bro, they're fucking balling out of control, bro. You know, so there are people, homie. We need to fucking help them out as well. You know what I mean? Well, I want to let you guys know. I'm going to let you guys pick my name tomorrow. Me and Miss Sancha, Dominique. I got to deal with multiple. <laughs> um, right, right. We're going to go get all the equipment for... Um, we got like three different shows we're going to do. We're going to have my boy El Jefe. Gracias El Jefe right here in the building. And we're going to um, have a cooking show. We're going to... Because I'm fat. And then we're going to have my... Royalty for president of the LPG, and um, and then we're gonna have our only fans where we're gonna have uh, women on there naked and interview them. You know, are you gonna I, like me Are you gonna measure their tits? Well, I'm gonna do everything. I'm gonna measure. I'm gonna drop to see if, how baloney sticks to their ass. I'm gonna. I gotta pick them all up in the van. That's one of the reasons I need the van. <laughs> you know, it's gonna be a trip for me. Huh? Make sure. Look. I'm going to tell you something. If you're going to, you know, uh, there was word that one girl was saying that one of the rules was when they ride in your van, they all got to ride in the van naked. I said, that's cool. That's cool. But, but you got to make sure that when you get the interior, that it's uh, like vinyl or leather, not cloth. Because if they sit on the cloth naked, all that pussy juice is going to get on the cloth and eventually it's going to contaminate it and stink. You know what I'm saying? Because sweaty pussy stinks. So you want to make sure that they fucking uh, sit on I, I, vinyl. I want to pay for leather. Well, you know, if they sit on vinyl, listen, if they you sit know, on vinyl, uh, then, this, like, then no, listen, dog. If they sit on vinyl, <laughs> the only thing that's going to be interesting when they get wet, they're going to get stuck like a suction cup. When they get up, it's going to go. Do I have to put them other legs and shit? Yes, sir. So you, all you do is carry a little rag and Windex and you clean it when they get up. Okay. So it, it doesn't stink. It doesn't get sticky. Okay. You know what I mean? Okay. But if you have cloth, you know, it's going to get dirty. What if they get stuck to the bed in the back for like no reason? Then you just, if they get stuck like that, you just leave them like that stuck and pry their legs apart. <laughs> <laughs> You know what I mean? I, hey, I mean, hey, hey we're stupid, dog. We're back, stupid. Get and hug them off. You know, you know, just, you know, I'm doing this for um. <laughs> anyway, Taco Bell. Huh? Oh man. Well, nah, we're I'm I'm retarded. All right, my boy. I'm tired. I'm gonna crash out. Much love, homie. Much hey, much love to all the fans. Much love to all the fans, homie. Everybody here. All right. So we'll talk. I know they're we'll tripping out right now with everything that went on. And they're probably, like, opening up the rise a little more now. Like I, like I tell you, I got a lot of DMs, man, and people were just saying, man, what a piece of shit that dude. You know, it's because they're seeing the reality now. He, he's he got no fucking uh, documentary. He's taking everybody's money. You guys can he's get your money back. Oh, I'm going to let them know. Yeah, get your go money you back, everybody. You Fuck it. And ask for your money back. It's go fund you. You can't, you can't let a motherfucker take your money for no fucking reason. You're supposed, right. to, you're supposed to provide something. You've had eight months with this money. You bragged that you had this money the first two weeks, the goal, and it went way over. And be, and, and not just what you see on there, there's more money involved. Every show. Oh, shows. yeah. And he ain't done shit, homie. Nothing. Now they nothing. Expect us. We didn't do nothing to him. We didn't talk shit nah. about him. You know nah, homie. All I, all I simply, shit. look, all I simply said, homie, was I didn't agree with his shit. And I said, fuck his show. I'm not going to be on it because of what he did. Because that's my opinion, bro, because I don't play that shit. I keep it true to the fans, homie. You know what I'm saying? I'm not going to play both sides of the field and mingle with the farmers, homie. You know what I'm saying? We worked hard to create this Chicano rap industry, homie, to let other motherfuckers like that come into our circle that are not a part of us 
if anything, all they did was blemish and shoot at anybody from down here that went up there to perform or whatever. They always fucking disrespecting on me. So now this fucking guy brings these guys down on me and he has them there like they're his best friends. He chose them over us, bro. So that showed us what type of individual he is and how true Brown his friendship Friday. was. Oh, Brown Friday. Friday. I'm not going to delete this. Watch it all you want. This going up. We don't give a fuck. Uh, uh, tonight, just so you guys know, we weren't going to talk shit, but he was on the show saying that we were going to fucking go on and we were going to do all this homo stuff. So, you know what I mean? All right, my boy. Peace. Good night, homie. All right, good night, homie. All right, later, homie. All right, everybody. Have a good motherfucking night. It's your boy, Royal. Oh, man. But, um, that was it, homie. I just, uh, we'll be back on this week. I'm setting up the podcast. You guys be ready, man. We're going to set the podcast. We're going to start small. I just want to talk to regular. If you motherfuckers want to come in, talk, come talk to me when we do the podcast. And, um, let me see. This one was night out. I might have a night out verse that no one heard. Let me see. Let me see. What is this? Oh, shit. Oh, damn. That's right. Y'all can't fuck with this. Unreleased, baby. Bad like me, I still be the one that they all wanna see. The dope is the ball, I be rocking the mic and I'm straight out the coconut steel. You better get out of the way, boo. It's Mr. Knight with the crew. And now I'ma drop it on you, motherfucker. So damn smooth. I got the shit that you want. The rock, the man, and your trunk. You'll never be able to do it, so best to leave with your junk. Cause you ain't got the style like us. We keep it so damn gangsta. We keep it gangsta, baby. So back in the day, the night, the shadow room. We keep it loyal, leaving the mic so hot that you would think that it was oil. So best to get this step in the whip and I'm packing is never on safety. I'm tired of all of you rappers that we spit bullshit lately. <laughs>